I felt nervous. <laughs> Shall we all stand please and let us uh, read our text this morning in Genesis chapter 22. Let us study about the faith, the great ta- uh, test in the life of Abram. Abraham. Are you there, Paul? So Genesis 22, let us read it from verses number 1 up to 13. Ah, 14, I'm sorry. Ah, 14, I'm sorry. Okay, are you there, Paul? Let us read this responsibly. Genesis chapter 22, verse number 1 to 14. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him. And Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place of which God had told them, him. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Amen. Verse 9, And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Everybody, 14th book. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, and it is said to this day, In the minds of the Lord it shall be seen. Shall we pray? A loving Lord, once again, thank you for your goodness in our lives. I pray, Father, that you will be the one to work in our midst. Help me, Lord, as I uh, teach and uh, preach at the same time to your people. Be the one, Lord God, to uh, help me and to deliver these words clearly, Lord, that your people will be challenged. Thank you once again for this great day. And I pray, Lord, that you will fill our hearts with joy and excitement. Thank you, Father. This is all as in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated, Paul. So... This is a very familiar uh, event that we are going to study and tackle this morning. But first, let's go back to Genesis 21. Now, we can see here in Genesis 21, the birth of Isaac. Amen? So, the Lord visited uh, Ab- uh, Sarah, as he had said, and they waited for 25 years before the promise of God uh, uh, came true. But God was paid, faithful to His promise as we believe. Amen? Amen? And we have to understand that God never fails. Amen? Amen? Jesus never fails. So the promise of the Son was not fulfilled because Abraham was a perfect of his obedience to the Lord, but because God was faithful to His word. Amen? Now we can see here in verse uh, 
1, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. So, as we can see here also from uh, verse number 2 to 7, that uh, Abraham uh, named uh, Isaac according to the promise. So, this is also a, a great, a what they call rebuke for uh, Abraham and Sarah, as we've noticed here in uh, Genesis 17, uh, verse number 17 to 19. It says here, Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? So this was a rebuke to them. Amen? And even also to Sarah as well. Here in Genesis chapter 18 verse number 12 to 15. Therefore Sarah what laughed within herself saying, After that I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure my Lord being old also? But thanks be to God, because this uh, God turned a gentle rebuke into an occasion of what He called joy and blessing. Amen? Amen. It is always a normal, and it is always a, in our nature that we as a people of God, sometimes we tend to doubt. Amen? Yeah. We really tend to doubt. But all we have to do, if we know that we have the Word of God, if we know that God will work in our lives, that God will do something to us, all we have to do is to believe. Amen. Now we can also see here in verses number 8 to 11. Now, we're not going to read that anymore, but uh, what happened here is that in uh, verse 8, and the child grew, we're talking here about Isaac, and was wind. <coughs> sorry. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was wind. And Zarah saw the, son, saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, what mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir, with my son, even with Isaac. And verse 11, And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. Now take note here that uh, as we can see, this is what he called, there has been what he called a conflict that happened here. We're talking, it describes for us this what he called a spiritual application between Isaac who is the son of the promise or the free woman, and Ishmael, who was the son of a bond woman, or the flesh. Now this is what happened here in Galatians chapter 4, 1 to 31. We're not going to read that anymore. What happened here was that the Jewish legalists, when you say legalists, these were the groups of people who tried to uh, put the law above the gospel, telling the Galatians, they put, telling the Galatians that they were of Abraham and they were blessed and of course Paul said yes they were but the question is this uh, who was the mother are they in a what you call in the flesh or are they in what the promise we have to understand brother and sisters in the Lord that the legalists promote a relationship with God based on bondage and according to the flesh but listen to me very carefully True gospel of grace offers this what you call liberty in Christ and is a promise received by faith. Amen. Now, let's proceed in verse number 12 to 14. This is not the instruction. 12 to 14. It says here, that, And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight, because of the lad and because of thy bandwoman, woman, in all that Sarah hath said unto thee. Hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be. And also of the son of the one bondwoman, will I make a nation because he is thy seed. Verse 14, Paul. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, took bread and a bottle of water, and gave it, and so on, and so forth. So forth. Now what happened here? Perhaps Abraham didn't want to give up. Because he wants what he called a backup. Of the plan, uh, what he might he 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 might think that uh, 
It's on his mind. Uh, if something will happen to uh, Isaac, I still have another backup. And that is Isaac. But let me tell this to you, brothers, this is the Lord. God wanted it clear there was no backup plan for Abraham other than God himself. I don't know for each of every one of you here. There's nothing wrong when we do some backups. But hey, if we, it is very clear and if it will be seen here in our eyes that it is the will of God and we are walking and doing His will in our lives, then there's no need for us to do this so-called backups. Pagkaalis ako dito, meron pa naman eh. Hey, you're very, very selfish. Abraham might have been tempted to reject Sarah's counsel, amen? But he sought the Lord, it is the good thing here in the matter. And did Sarah suggested here. And without feeling, he was giving in to Sarah. Send her away. Send her away. God's solution here was very clear. Get rid of the son of the flesh. The same thing in our lives. If we want to be very successful, if we want that God will really work in our lives, we have to get rid of those selfish desires in our lives. Flesh that keeps on working in our lives. There is to be no reconciliation of the flesh. No peaceful coexistence. We have to understand that. The flesh must simply be what? Put away forever. Although in our lives we really cannot avoid. Because we are still in the flesh. But we know what to do, brothers and sisters in the Lord. That is the solution. Our battle between trusting in the flesh and trusting in the Holy Spirit is needed, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Law and grace cannot live together as these what we call principles of our Christian life. And there is no question we belong, that we belong to the free, amen? amen. Not the bond woman. So what happened here to make the long story short? Here we go again. Eh? God wants us to be ruthless with the flesh in the same manner. Amen, Paul? Amen. Galatians 5.24 and they that are Christ have what? Crucified the flesh with the affections and what? The lust. What we notice here in verse 14 is that Abraham what says here, Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her what? Shoulder. We, know, we knew that Abraham was a wealthy man. Amen? He was a wealthy man. And could certainly spare more provisions in, uh, in order for us, uh, Hagar and Ishmael, to be used in their journey. Amen? But of course, Abraham also realized that without God's help, no matter what he gave, it would not be enough. Hey, everything that we have in Christ is enough for us. And all we have to do is to enjoy and be thankful for all of these things. But with God, things would turn all right. Amen. Amen. So that's what happened. Now, after that, of course, Abraham and Zarin were enjoying their son Isaac, but here comes now a great te test in his life. Let's proceed now to chapter 22. The great test in Abraham's life. And I believe that every one of us here experienced a great test in our lives. Amen? I don't know which area in our lives God had tested us, but I believe those tests has been a great help for each every one of us. Through those testings we grow. And God molded us. In order for us to become a worthy vessel. 
ready for the master's use. Now let us see here in text here in chapter 22 verse number 1 and 2. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. This is not just an attempt that we know. But this is just a what you call a test. And said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. In verse 2, and he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, mountains which I will tell thee of. This is a great test, amen? But we have to understand that this test was much a, what they call, test to produce faith. But it was a test to reveal his faith in God. God built Abraham slowly, piece by piece, year by year, into a man of faith. As we Christians, as we continue in our service towards our God... Who is a living God. Who is a true God. Who is a sovereign God. God is molding us. God is uh, producing us slowly but surely. And God is doing it piece by piece in our lives. And moving us and making us into a man or women of faith. Amen. He's been doing that. This is now. The test. And said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And said, Take now thy son, thine only son, and Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and what? Offer him there for a burnt sacrifice. Offering. Wow. Can you imagine that? After enjoying together with uh, their son Isaac. But again here, we can see here, his trust in God. Amen. A test. If you will be asked this kind of question, what would you do? The world will always say, Hey, God, mind your own business. And that is the thinking of this world. There was a uh, document uh, given here. Uh, in, uh, it happened in 1993 by the name of Andrew Kate. He was sentenced into uh, uh, about uh, 60 years in prison for being conv uh, convicted of fatally killing his two-year-old daughter. After that, walking naked, carrying the dead body of her daughter. Saying that he did this in order for her brother to be win and to become a Christian. Of course, that's very weird. Amen. And we can be, and we we believe here that uh, he was really in the what they call uh, out of his well, he was out of his mind. We have to understand that Abraham did was something completely unique, amen. In God's redemptive history, it was given in this what they call a specific purpose once for all fulfilled. And I believe there's no way God would ever direct someone to do that today. The same thing today. Because it was only given to what they call a specific purpose. But here the test was especially hard because of what happened here. It is what they call a contradiction. After God promised to him in Genesis 21 verse 12. And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight. Because of the lad, and because of thy band woman, and all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac, what? Shall thy seed be called? 
to that. After he promised, and then right now he, he wants to uh, take my son and, try and offer him as a burnt sacrifice, a born offering. We have to understand here, brothers and sisters in the Lord. We have to learn the difference between trusting the promise and trusting the promiser. Amen? Trusting. We can put God's promise before God himself and feel it. It is our responsibility to bring the promise to pass. Even if we have to disobey God to do it. Hey, but listen. Trust the promiser no matter what. And the promise will be taken care of later on. Hey. God always gives this what they call great test in our lives. And get thee into the land of Moriah. Moriah, by the way, is what they call the modern Jerusalem right now. There was a what they call a specific place God commanded Abraham to go. A particular spot where this would happen. God is carefully directing each detail. Remember, God is a God of order. We have to do that. There's no such thing as what you call a uh, shortcut. If you want to become successful in life, then you have to pass through those great tests in your life that God is laying down on you on that road. And it will be a very precious time for you to enjoy if you can pass it all through. It is because we know that God will always be with us. Hey. Abraham's immediate response in verse 3. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and claimed the wood of the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of which God had what? Told him. Take note here. He didn't even ask the counsel for somebody to help him on what to do. Amen. He did not say, God, what? After all of these things? And then you will say that I will offer my son Isaac to you? What? He didn't ask any question because he trusted God. He didn't even go to Sarah. Sarah, what will I do? God said this thing. Amen. Amen. He didn't ask any counsel who or even made a debate or seek counsel from others. He knew what to do because he trusted God. Amen. Abraham is trusting even when he does not feel like it. Amen. Ahead, it might be dark or, or blurred. But again, he saw the goodness of God in his life. Trusting. He trusted God. There is not a line in this text about how Abraham felt. Not because he didn't feel, but he, because he was walking by what? Faith, not feelings. Kaya napakahalaga mga kapatid na ngayong paglilingkod sa ating pagtatrabaho, hindi dapat na manaig ang feelings. We've been doing this because this is our responsibility given to us by God. Eh marami sa atin na mga ano eh, puro feelings. Nasabihan lang ng ano, ayaw na, galit na. Mark them. Ay wala na, na out of context na. Huwag naman ganun. Everybody can commit mistakes, but there is always this what they call reconciliation. God wants us to love one another. God wants us to understand one another. Hindi feelings, mga kapatid. Because yung feelings ang nanaig sa buhay ni Abraham, no, this will not happen. 
God had been training Abraham, bringing him to this place of this great trust. Amen? Great trust. What happened here? In verse 3. And saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and claved the wood for a burnt offering. Amen. Abraham had plenty of servants to do for this for him. But Abraham did it himself because even in his old age, he can still do it. He can still do it. He has the energy. In wonderful trusting obedience, Abraham went right to the spot. Abraham does this even though it would have been if God asked Abraham to offer himself instead of Isaac. He can do that. Lord, ako na lang. But he trusted God. Amen. Trust God. But a John, please, Proverbs chapter 3. Seven. Everybody knows this verse. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways. All thy ways, not some. Acknowledge him and he shall what? Direct thy paths. Hindi ka pababayan ng Dios. If you will trust him completely. Hindi yung hati. Lalo sa paglilingkod natin sa Panginoon. Trust. Amen? Trust. Point number two. We can see here in verse number four to eight. It says here. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw, and saw the plays afar off. So it took them three days before they arrived in Mount Moriah. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass. And I and the lad would go yonder and worship and come again to you. Verse 6. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. So, wala pang lighter noon time na yun, mga kapatid. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father. Uh, but take note, please underline this phrase here. And I, verse 5, And I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come to you again. Point number, number two. This is what we call confidence. Amen. His confidence. Abraham came to the place on the third day. The region of Moriah is associated with Mount Moriah, which is the modern day Jerusalem, as what I've said to you. You can see that in 2 Chronicles 3 1. It says here, then Solomon, 2 Chronicles 3 1, began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem in what? Mount Moriah. Where the Lord appeared unto David his father in the place that David had appeared, had, had prepared in the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebu site. Here, they said, they will go there to worship the Lord. But please take note on this. Abraham and Isaac did not go there to the mount to have this what they call time of joyful praise unto the Lord. But they went there to bow down to the Lord. Our reverence towards our God is very essential. Reverence to our God. It represents our humility towards Him. Knowing that we cannot do anything without His help. Nothing will happen in his life if he will not direct our ways. That is very clear here in the word of God. But look at the confidence here. 
as what I've said to you a while ago in verse 1. And I and the lad will go yonder and worship and what? Come to you again. This is Abraham's full faith. Amen. Towards God. When he speaks to the young men who are with him, he believes that they can return soon. Amen. After worshiping the Lord in Mount Moriah. Wow. What a confidence. Amen. Amen. But the question is, does this mean that Abraham knew that God is only testing him? Does he know about this? Huh? Actually, not at all instead. Abraham's faith is in the knowledge that should he kill Isaac, God would, what? would raise him from the dead. And that is his faith. His confidence toward God. Because God had promised Isaac would carry on the line of blessing in the covenant. Amen. He knew in Isaac, your seed shall be what? Be called. By faith, Abraham. That's why he was included in the what? Hall of faith. Not hall of famers. Amen po. Let us read Hebrews 11, 17 to 19. Hebrews 11, 17 to 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise, promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God what was able, amen, to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure, amen? And that is confidence. And hey, do you have any confidence knowing that God can do something in our lives? That is confidence. Knowing that later on we will be with him in heaven. Knowing that we have eternal life. Knowing that we are safe and we will no longer go to hell. Amen. Confidence. That's what we need. Amen. Hindi yung parang palagi ka lang nawawala ng pag-asa. Napagalitan ako. Ang pangit mo. <laughs> hey. Have confidence in God. This is just a test. Well, he knew everything was possible, but it was impossible that God would break his promise. Confidence, amen? He knew God was not a liar. He had no precedent. Or, but Abraham knew God was able and could do it, amen? Confidence. Kaya nga, pag meron tayong pinapanalangin sa Panginoon, have confidence. Because we know God answers prayer. Amen? Amen. Yes, no, or wait. But it's still good. Amen? Abraham took the wood of a burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. Now, this is a very uh, dramatic scene here that we can see. Verse 7. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? While walking, when he was asked the question, I believe that Abraham was really, really hurt. But watch what he said. Isaac, the Lord will provide. Amen? Napakagandang pakinggan. 
It says here that God took the knife, knife up the hill, but he didn't forget it. That the knife is really cutting his heart deep within. A great test in his life. But again, unbelief would have been left the knife at home. But praise the Lord, genuine faith prevails. Yan ang kailangan natin sa ating buhay, mga kapatid. His willingness. God will provide. Abraham knew God would provide a sacrifice. But the question is where? Where? Where was the lamb? That question had been asked by all of the faithful men of God. From Abraham down to the ages from Paul. We can see that. But hey, listen to me very carefully. Have confidence. Amen. Verse 9 po, says here, And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar. You know, Abraham, I, I believe uh, during this time, uh, Isaac now is a grown up man. Amen? He has the ability to disobey his father. Amen. But try to imagine very carefully, brothers and sisters from the Lord. On the altar, being prepared. And then after the altar was prepared, he comes now the second one, binding his son to be offered to God. Hey, it's not easy. It's not easy. But hey. He trusted and loved the Lord in his life. He was an obedient son. That his obedience is very important. Isaac laid down on the wood and ready to be sacrificed. How about us? Are we ready to surrender everything to God in our lives? I know it's everyone of has a of us have I mean we have weaknesses we have some failures in our lives but if we keep on uh, keeping these things in our lives we will not prosper in our service towards the Lord we have to surrender everything to God and allow God to work in our lives completely If you want God to do more in your lives. Well, the reason why God cannot work in our lives, why? Tinatago pa rin natin yung mga dapat nating ilabas na at isuko na sa Diyos sa ating buhay. That's why you are struggling in the service towards the Lord. Why? Because you are not faithfully doing His work. So sad. Last point. Amen. Amen. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad. Lad. Neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know, amen, that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the, that place, what? 
Jehovah Jireh, as it is, is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Amen. Here comes now the, the event. It's about to slay his son. Hey, he was tough. Amen. Amen. God said, Abraham, I saw your faithfulness. Now I know that you love me. Now I know that your faith is great. Stop. Amen. I believe that Abraham was willing to punch that knife into Isaac. Because that's what we've studied a while ago. Because his faith was in God's ability to raise Isaac amen, from the dead. Not in God's desire to stop the sacrifice. Abraham didn't think this was a, what they call theatrical actuations. But this is real. Amen. This is real. They're not playing there. They were not playing. One may say that it is not right. After everything has been said and done, and then suddenly God will uh, let Abraham to stop. Let it go. That's what the world will say. But hey, God often takes the will for the dead with his, pe with his people. When he finds them what truly willing to make the sacrifice he demands, he often does not require it. This is how we can be martyrs without ever dying for Christ. We live the life of a martyr right now. Do you believe in that? Yes. Amen. Often there are believers who wonder how they may know the will of God. How do we know the will of God? That question has been asked many, many times. But according to Barnhouse, listen very carefully, it is a very good one. We believe that 90% of the knowing of the will of God consists in willingness to do it before it is known. Amen, Amen Paul? Yes. But again, we've heard to our pastor many, many times and some of the preachers here, Knowing the will of God, listen to me very carefully. All you have to do is to read the Bible. Listen to those preachings from His Word. Amen? Pray to God. And I believe the will of God will be revealed in your lives. Because we people were hard-headed. We really wanted to make our own way. Thinking that it will be okay and right for us. But later on it is, be, it is always be a what? A big mess. And a damage and destruction in our lives. Alam mo naman eh. Bakit mo gagawin ang pansarili mong kagustuhan? May will ang Diyos sa buhay. Then follow. Kaya ngayon, marami sa atin hindi pa rin lumalago. Bakit? Mas sinusunod natin ating sarili. Kesa sa kagustuhan ng Diyos. Point number three. His courage. Amen. Abraham displayed his heart towards God and that he was willing to give his only son. God displays His heart toward us in the same way. By what? Giving His only begotten Son. John 3.16. Everybody knows this verse. Amen? Amen? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Take note of this. When God asked Abraham for the ultimate demonstration of commitment and love 
He asked Abraham's son, Isaac. Amen? But when the father wanted to show us the ultimate demonstration, demonstration of his love and commitment to us, he gave his son, the only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? That's why we have to know we have to understand that God loves us so much. Ito lang ba ipapalit natin? Along the way, may nasabi lang sa na hindi mo nagustuhan, ayaw mo na. Hello? Please wake up. God is good all the time. Sayang eh, nasimula na eh. We have to finish it. By the grace of God. Naming the place here, the Lord will provide or Jehovah Jireh. Abraham didn't name that place in reference to what he went through. He could say it, a what you call a uh, hill of agony. But he called it as what? The hill of provision. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because He is always faithful in our lives. Remember what the Lord uh, said to uh, Joshua Be strong and of good courage. Let's take the verse here. Buddy John, please. Joshua 1.8 It says here This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt have thy way prosperous and thou shalt have have good success verse 9 have not I commanded thee it says here what? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither thou be, dis uh, be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. That is our God. And again here, blessings flowed in the life of Abraham because of his complete trust, confidence, and courage towards God. Lord, brothers and sisters in the Lord, we might be experiencing this what you call great test in our lives right now. But all we have to do is just to hold on and keep our eyes on Him. Amen. 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 It's always been said, God will always do the rest if we will completely trust and believe Him in our lives. Great test. But after those testings, I will tell you, numerous and countless blessings will flow. I'm not talking about material things. I'm not talking about that. But blessings will flow in our lives. And I hope that this message that we're studying will challenge us to continue to move on. Amen? Amen. So we also let us pray.